Hi, my name is Josh, and I'm a watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? So, check this out. I know, it seems weird. But, this strap right here, in all of its mustardy yellowness and goodness, is what originally kicked my love of yellow stuff off and it's been an interesting ride so i have been on a yellow kick recently and i just am enjoying the color yellow now if you follow the channel you know that blue is my all-time favorite color i have more blue watches than i can shake a stick at if it has a blue accent or something like that i will usually gravitate towards it then over something that doesn't uh, for example the mako v3 has that little blue accent on it instead of the orange that the v3.5 has i did a whole video kind of comparing those two side by side and i'll pick the blue one every day of the week I actually have incoming, I don't know when they're going to get filled, but I just submitted the pre-order and bought the Dryden Heartlander, and I got the gray one with the baby blue accents. But aside from all of my love of blue, I wanted to check out more yellow stuff. And I kind of started dabbling into it slowly, again, mainly with this strap. So I just kind of want to take you along my journey that I've had on yellow stuff. And then hopefully at the end of this, you can comment down below and let me know what yellow recommendations you have, whether it be for straps or watches or dials or accessories or whatever. I don't know. This is just kind of an all things yellow and watch related type of video. So here's what happened. I went and bought this Nixon. Now, Nixon is one of those love-hate brands. Some people love to hate it. I don't mind it. I actually think this is a very, very well-made and durable watch. I like the overall aesthetic. I thought it was playful. Anyway, I bought this Nixon. This Nixon came on this mustard yellow Horween strap. And so, as you can see, after getting it, I took this yellow strap off of it because I didn't, I didn't love the yellow strap on that, even though I kind of get why somebody might. I found this kind of light brown leather NATO and I put it on it and it's kind of lived on this NATO ever since I got this watch. But here's what I found really interesting, right? And you can see, I'm pretty sure this is the Horween stamp. You zoom in real quick, you can read that Horween. And so it's it's interesting to me that the Nixon watch came with a Horween leather strap because usually Horween straps are appreciated by watch enthusiasts and by the watch community. And so I think this is branded Nixon on the thing. And I've just left this buckle on it. You can see that it was kind of black coated to match the black PVD case of this one, which I don't usually love on watches, but I don't mind on this one. And so, but this strap right here kind of just sat over in the corner all by itself. Yeah, you can see here it's Brandon Nixon, but you can see this one just kind of sat all by itself and I didn't really have anything to go on until Zelos came out with their first forged carbon dial. That forged carbon, the yellow of this strap really plays with the yellow that, the, or at least what I think is yellow is mixed into the, the carbon dial, the forged carbon dial. And so in my mind, this was a perfect pairing for that. And so I've since taken it off because I'm doing all this yellow stuff and I just kind of want to see what else I could pair with it. But I started off then saying, oh, well, what's another maybe yellow strap and what could it go with? And I found this beauty. So this is the stainless steel 42 millimeter Zelos Swordfish. Now this is one of the OGs though that has the aqua marine dial. This dial is so stunning. So, so, so stunning. But you'll notice that it's got a pop of yellow on the second hand that just looks really, really good. So I found this pale yellow leather strap that I put on it to really bring out the accents 
both of the dial, any yellow hues of the dial, but then also with the yellow pop in the second hand. Now, I will say that if you can look at this strap, especially compared to like this Horween, it's super thin. And so this, while it wears okay on wrist, the weight ratio of strap to case makes it wear a little top heavy. And so I, I might one day find more of a pale yellow like this, but in a much thicker and beefier strap to go on that. One of these days, I think I'm just going to get custom straps made so that I can also get them made for the length of my huge wrist. Oh, by the way, this is kind of yellowish, but not really. So I didn't include in this video. This is my Laurier and this thing is fantastic, but gold watches aside, I'm not doing gold watches in this video, even though you let me know is gold yellow. I mean, there is yellow gold, but. I'm doing yellow outside of gold right now, even though I am wearing this just because it's awesome and I love it. So anyway, here's that. So I was kind of doing the yellow straps. You can see though, definitely the color contrast between those. And then I went for another yellow strap. So this is a Casio. I don't know what the model number is, but it's kind of like a, a day date and it's quartz watch. It's kind of blingy. The dial is like a yellowish tone, and then it has kind of the golden accents to it. It almost is like rose gold on the accents and indices. And so, but what I did was I found this, whether it's Speedel or Spidel, I don't know how you pronounce this company's name, but I found these plaid straps and I think I ordered them off of eBay, but I love these things. I've got them in pink and in blue and in yellow. Those are the three that I'm aware of that they make, or at least last time I checked. And so this yellow one, you can just kind of see how playful it is. And I really enjoy it. I think that it's a cool color combo. I think it pairs really well with this watch, even though it's super duper bright. I guess that's the thing on this yellow kick. You gotta be prepared to be bright and not care about that. I think some people kind of like muted colors, maybe like black dials and gray dials. And this is definitely not, <laughs> this is definitely not in that caliber, right? Or in that category. So this was another one I got. So we'll just keep stacking these up here, but we got yellows going on. Now, the funny thing that I then did, let me see if I'm trying to go in order. I then found out about this one. And I've got to give credit to Dave at just the watch. So Dave did a video on this yellow Casio. And I was like, oh, I like that. Now that started me down a whole nother journey that I won't get into. I'll do it another day. Maybe I'm, I may have shared it on the channel already, but I did a collect them all with these GA 2100s up until a little while ago. The problem is, is they're producing so many now because of their popularity that I can't keep up with them. So I did a collect them all before the metal ones, right? I quit doing a collect them all right around the time they came out with the metal ones. I did get the collect them all in the GMAS, the smaller variants, the four of those. But anyway, Dave sent me down this rabbit hole. It was this yellow one. So this is kind of two twofold the Casio rabbit hole and the yellow rabbit hole but it's really interesting to see how like all of these shades of yellow are different and I think that's what I've started to appreciate uh you know I often do comparisons and side-by-side -side things on this channel I especially like to look at different dials that are supposedly the same but that are really different and I find all of that stuff fascinating and so for me, I found it fascinating just to see the very different shades of yellow once you start getting all of these, because if you just had nothing but this one, right, if you only saw this yellow, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's yellow. But then once you start putting it next to this one, that's a little bit more mustard and this one, that's a little bit more pale and this one that is a little plaid. So it's got a little gold accent right here, the brown accent going on. I don't know. They're just all different. I like to know my options and I always want the thing that I like the most or that is the best. And so in this case, it's like not all shades of yellow are created equal. Which one do I like? And that's kind of where this journey has been sending me off to. Now, the next thing I was able to do was, well, if we talk about like yellow accents again, I picked up this Scurfa. So this is a quartz dive watch. I don't know much about Scurfa. I haven't done a video on this yet. I've actually had it for a little while now and I bought it because one, it's blue. <laughs> I love blue, but it is yellow. Look at that pop of yellow on those 
giant sword hands and that beautiful kind of lollipop-esque seconds hand. And so this one, I kind of wasn't even on the lookout for it, but it popped up in one of the groups that I'm in and it was pretty inexpensive and it, it had the yellow. And of course, I just, this shade of blue is a whole nother shade of blue. I'll have to go over that one of these days. I'll have to compare this because it kind of looks like almost like the Mountain Glacier Alpinist, but not really. But I have a Mountain Glacier Alpinist too, so I can hold this up side by side with it. Zelos has one. I think Dane is selling one. It's a slate blue titanium swordfish 40 millimeter. I may try to get it just to compare it next to this. But anyway, the yellow, the yellow is what sold me on this. Aside from the beautiful color of blue that I think it has on the dial and bezel, the yellow is what sold me. And I, I was like, man, I like that pop. And you'll notice that because the hands are so much larger that you get a much more yellow feel off the scurfa than you do on the swordfish, at least when you take away the giant yellow straps I put on it, you know, but I'm thinking about what kind of maybe getting a nice rubber strap, like an FKM style, isoframe, whatever, like a Doxa style rubber strap that's yellow to go on this scurfa. I think that would look amazing. And then I'll take it off this bracelet and that would really make that kind of pop the way that this Aqua Marine Zelos does. Yeah, I don't know. Let me know. Do you have do you have a strap recommendation? This thing, even though it's a quartz, it's got some heft to it. So it can't be a thin strap like this one. It, it's going to need to be a little hefty, but it still should conform to the wrist. I don't love a lot of, I don't know. I'm not been sold on the FKM rubber strap craze. And maybe that's just me. And maybe that's only because of the FKM rubber straps that I've been um, receiving, whether it's been on watches or in on other loans or whatever. I'm not super impressed with them. So we'll talk about that. I mean, well, I could talk about the next style. I mean, this is a yellow monster that my buddy let me borrow because he knew that I was going down this yellow kick and I wanted to see, I wanted to start seeing aside from the straps and yellow accents that I could get, what can I get in the way of yellow dials? And so, as y'all know, I, I send watches out frequently to people. People often send their watches to me and let me borrow them. And so this is my good buddy, Jiro. He let me borrow this. And it was solely for the fact that I wanted to experience more yellow. And he was like, oh, yeah, here, I got this one. And he's got a couple other ones. We're going to see him in a second. But this was the first one he had mentioned. And it's a beautiful, like bright, vibrant yellow. So you look at it like even compared to the pale on that, it is so much brighter of a yellow. Now let's get it and compare it like to the hands right here. And even then you'll see, I can't explain it, but it's just, it's brighter. It's not more pale, but it's brighter. And it's weird how that works, but I like it. It's a really good shade of yellow. I do say I like the shade of yellow in this one too. That was kind of my favorite leading up to this. And then I saw this and I was like, oh yeah. I like that. Now, where it comes into talking about rubber straps, this strap is super duper comfortable. It kind of reminds me on the strap that came on my Arnie, and that is super comfortable. I want to feel more straps like this that are like silky smooth to the touch. I, not quite velvety smooth, but it is smooth. And this is the kind of strap that I want. It's easily pliable. Look at how, how much flex there is in that. Some of the FKM ones that I'm, I'm getting, they're like, they're like, you can't flex them. They're so stiff. And I don't know if they just require a huge break in period before they get comfortable. I had like an isoframe style strap that was like that too. It was just, you couldn't do this with it. It wouldn't bend. So anyway, that's a good strap, but this is dial. That's what it's all about. Now let me compare it up to another one because he sent me another one. And this one is actually pretty impressive. This is the moon monster. Now, when I hold these two up next to each other, once again, we'll be able to see that there's just such a difference in yellow sometimes. Even the bezel, the accents, the color accents on the bezel, the left is much like more pronounced and darker of a hue than the one on the right is. Even though they otherwise look like they could be the same, they're really not. The one on the right is a much lighter shade. It's a brighter shade of yellow than the left is even on the bezel. 
And then once you get into the dial and whatnot, you can definitely see there's more of like a fume pattern on this. It's got the moon etched out in there. And so this is really cool. Keep an eye out. He also has the sun version of this, the sun monster. And I'm going to do a video where I compare those two side by side and just look at the sun monster. Just talk about the sun and moon monster. But in this case, he included them because he was like, yeah, here's some yellow if you want to check them out. And I was like, yes, sir. I will say this one. Let me zoom in on this real quick. This dial, I don't know if I can get it to come across on camera, but it's got like a gloss semi sunburst effect to it. And it's really hard to capture on camera, but in person, there's a texture to this yellow dial that like this one does not have. This is a very flat, almost pastel kind of yellow when we're talking about this, like a matte, no shine, no nothing. And so that's another thing that I noticed on these when I get them side by side. I think I like the sunburst kind of texture and sheen on these. I, I think that's one of the reasons why I love the Seiko Alpinist so much, my green one, the Sarbo 17. It's that beautiful sunburst pattern that it gives you. Between these two, I think I like the moon one a little bit more, even though I like the color, the bright color of this other one. So anyway, we went down that rabbit hole. And then finally, there's one yellow dial that a lot of people were talking about in the micro brand world. And I had not had gotten my hands on it. And I finally was able to borrow one from a friend. RZ, they were originally called Reese. Now they're called RZE, but it's as, I think this is the Resolute. Don't quote me. Oh man, maybe I should have looked that up before I filmed this. Oh, well, it, it doesn't really matter because I'm not really talking about the watch. It is a stunning watch though. It is titanium. It's got a great taper. It wears great on wrist. It's got nice bezel action and all that. So in the micro brand space, this is definitely a good one. And RZE keeps coming out with like banger new releases. They're doing well. I'll just say that. And everybody that I know who has them or who has experienced them has had a very good experience. So kudos to RZE for that. But in my experience, I just wanted to see yellow. I just wanted to see yellow. Now in the micro brand space, there's a couple other yellows that I would love to see, but I haven't been able to get my hands on yet. The first one is the yellow Helios Seaforth. Now, that watch is just a stunner. Y'all know that I've had many Seaforths and I loved them, even though I don't have any now and I've sold the four that I had. It's just kind of the way the hobby works, but I would get another one. And I think Jason is coming out with a new titanium Seaforth. I want it on the bracelet though. I want the bracelet and I want the new micro adjust bracelet that Helios is coming out with like on the Fairwind or whatever it was. I haven't gotten one of those yet, but I want that, but with a yellow dial and I want it in the Seaforth case. And so we'll see if he ever does that, but that's one that I would love to get my hands on. The other one that I've almost come across once or twice now and bought, but it never did work out with either one of the sellers. It's the Hampton H2 Kraken yellow dial. Now I bought, I backed that Kickstarter campaign before it went up in flames and I can't recommend Hampton as a brand. In fact, they don't even really exist anymore. And I feel really, really bad for all the people who did not get their orders fulfilled by Ross. And I don't know what came of all of that. I'm not going to get into it. Um, other than to say I did back the original H2 Kickstarter. I got three of them. I got the black, the light blue, the baby blue and a white. I had the option to get the yellow and the pictures, the renders didn't look good. And so I didn't get one and I regret it because after seeing photos of the yellow one out in the wild, I want one. In fact, if, it, if I could go back and do it all over again, I would have just ordered maybe the blue and the yellow one anyway. So the yellow Hampton is another one that I'm, I'm considering still even getting, even though Hampton is up in flames and I can't recommend them as a brand or anything like that. The watches themselves, the watches are pretty nice. Like I can't lie. I can't say that they're not. So it, it's a tough dichotomy there where the brand and everything that happened to them is awful, but the watches themselves are actually pretty nice. So take that for what it's worth. But in the micro brand space, other than this Reese, those are the ones that I had been eyeing. And so let me know what you think. If you have any of those, or if you got that yellow Hampton, you want to sell it to me cheap, let me know. I, I might take it off your hands. 
So this yellow is an interesting one on this Reese or RZE because I, I've heard it likened to the Steelers yellow, the Pittsburgh Steelers NFL team. And I think it is that shade of yellow, whatever the Pittsburgh Steelers yellow is, it is very much that when I hold it up next to some of these other ones, you start to see, I wouldn't call it mustard, but it definitely is a darker, deeper shade of yellow. It is much closer to my mustard yellow strap than it is some of these other colors when I hold it up next to it and you start to see it play out. And so, I don't know, once again, I find this fascinating. So then here's what I did. I went on AliExpress and I saw that they had an escapement time. Now this is the quartz watch. I think these things are amazing. I'm slowly but surely doing a collect them all with the escapement time watches. I think this is my third one now. And so you'll see those in another video, but I have it on this Hadley Roma Jubilee bracelet that is a perfect fit and perfect pairing for it. The bracelet is not the greatest. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a semi cheap bracelet Hadley Roma. I mean, they make decent affordable type stuff. You know, the clasp is not great, but for what it is, this thing wears well. And I really just wanted yellow, but here's where, where it's interesting. You compare these and they're different, but you can also notice that they're both like a little darker. So when I'm on the hunt, for a really bright and vibrant yellow, kind of like you see in this one. Like that's kind of what I want, but I don't know. I, I want like a mix of these. If I could take all three of these shades of yellow and put them in a bucket and paint a dial with it, that probably is what I would want to do. So that's been my journey. That's been my journey. Now what's funny about this, this came on a yellow strap that I don't think matched well with it at all. And so, I took what is otherwise probably a $2 AliExpress faux leather strap and I put it on this Zelos Mirage eight day Azure and it is stunning. So I've been enjoying this. There's not really yellow in this, but when you put it on that, it goes. Is it weird to put such a nice watch on such a cheap strap? I don't know. I don't know. Is that like leather on a diver and people freak out about it? Is that a thing? I'm not a watch snob. So don't let me know if you're a watch snob and you think that this fancy watch right here shouldn't go on a $2 strap. Let me know. Cause I'm curious. But anyway, so that's what I did though. I got yellow, yellow. This is a great shade. I almost wish the dial of the escapement time was that color yellow. I, I probably would have stopped my hunt for the perfect yellow dialed watch because you can see this came on that and it doesn't match. Like it doesn't look good at all. But then again, all of my escapement times come on a semi similarly colored strap and they're all awful. None of them match. I take all of them off and I pair them with other watches like I did with these two. So that's where we're at with my yellow journey. So let me know what yellow is your favorite. What have you found? What would you recommend? What other yellow dials other than the Hampton? I think the Hampton is the one that I want the most because I don't know that I'm going to be able to find a Helios. I think the Helios ones are just sometimes they feel like they're unobtainable or I'm not willing to pay the prices. Maybe that's it too. I could probably get it if I ponied up and I'm not willing to pony up. I would pony up for a Hampton though, especially because they've basically driven their company into the dirt. And so if somebody might just be trying to get out of it, maybe they don't want the memories of the horrible experience they went through with that H3 campaign. If you're one of those folks, sincerely, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. But anyway, these currently are my favorites right here. You can see I've got a lot in the background, but with that, we'll call this one to a wraps. Until we talk again, my friends, please remember what really matters and that that's not watches. Keep the insanity sane.